Hi, Matt Morton, lead pastor of Cross Fellowship Church. Just want to take a moment and say thank you very much for watching this video today. It is my hope and my prayer that the message uh, really ministers to you and ultimately helps you take one step closer to Jesus. At the end of the message, you will hear an invitation to place your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you have not already done so, I can promise you there's no better decision you could ever make in your life. If you have questions about just how to do that or you need to talk to someone about that, at the bottom of the screen here is a telephone number for the church office. Please feel free to call and we'll be happy uh, to spend some time with you. Uh, thank you again for watching today and in Jesus' name, blessings. finished saying all these things. Man, it seems like just yesterday we, we were called to walk with him, to follow him. So many things that we've heard along the way, so many principles, so many truths, so many profound lessons. He demonstrated for us what it looked like to be a kingdom citizen and, and the character and and conduct of those who would follow him. We journeyed with him and we saw incredible miracles and we saw people delivered and set free. And, and at every turn we were amazed at all that Jesus said and did. As we moved towards Jerusalem and the Passover celebration, Jesus was was very intentional with the things that he said. And he began to talk about his return, and he began to talk about us being ready for his, his, his coming. We had so many questions. What, what would be the sign of the end of the age? When would that take place? And we, we walked through that and, and were challenged as we, as we thought about all that, that Jesus said. But really, all of it was to prepare us for these days. These last two days before Jesus would die were filled with, with so much stress and anxiety and, and uncertainty. When Jesus finished saying all these things, he said to us, he said to his disciples, as you know, Passover begins in two days and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. At that same time, the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas. 
the purpose of their meeting was to plot a way to kill Jesus, to capture Jesus secretly and and put him to death. The only thing they seemed to agree on in that moment was was not during the, the Passover celebration or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a, a woman came in and, and, and was carrying a beautiful alabaster jar of, of expensive perfume. She came to where Jesus was sitting and she poured it over his head. You can imagine the disciples, when they saw this, they were indignant. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the leading priests and he asked them a question. How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? They gave him 30 pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Betrayal. I wonder if that was on Jesus' radar. He'd spent so much time with, with us, with the disciples. He had to know that Judas would betray him. But yet he... He brought them together, and he did something in that moment. And we're, we're going to do it again in this place today. But, but he began uh, 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 an opportunity to, to remember. He, he, he showed them. He demonstrated for them what it, what it looks like to, to recall and to remember his sacrifice, his body broken, his blood spilt. They had the Lord's Supper together. He did something that would carry on through all of the future. Something that we get to participate in even as followers of Jesus today. In a moment, we're going to, we're going to sing a song. And, and while that happens, the ushers are going to pass out the elements. Two cups and one, a, a bread and a juice. If you're a follower of Jesus today, if you've been born again, we invite you to to celebrate, to remember what Jesus did after the song we're going to continue in Matthew chapter 26, and and you'll know exactly when to, to take the elements, to remember, to reflect. But we're warned throughout scripture, aren't we, that that we are to prepare our hearts and, and to receive these elements in, a, in a, a worthy manner. The first and foremost primary way we do that is by being a follower of Jesus. This is the Lord's table. This is his body broken and his blood spilt for you and me. So if you're a follower of Jesus today, we want you to, to participate. If you're not, we want you to observe. And we want you to think deeply and reflect personally on a relationship with Jesus. He died that you and I might have a relationship with him. So as we're singing this song, I invite you to spend a few moments in prayer, just preparing your heart, giving thanks, reflecting on the, the sacrifice of Jesus. It's interesting that he did it on the night that he was betrayed. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gave. 
first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and they said, the festival is near. Where do you want us to prepare the supper, the Passover meal for you? As you go into the city, Jesus said, you will see a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says, my time has come and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. The disciples did as Jesus told them and went and prepared the meal there. When evening came, he sat down with his disciples and he said, I tell you the truth. 
one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one of us, each one asked in turn, am I the one, Lord? Jesus replied, the one who is just eaten from the bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die according to the Scriptures. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would have been far better for that man had he never been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? Jesus replied, you have said it. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. He gave thanks to God for it, saying, oh, Father, thank you for this, for this bread, for this life-giving substance. It's a reminder that you give us life. It's a reminder that it, it can be broken and distributed. Thank you for this bread. And so he gave thanks, blessed the bread, and then he took it and he broke it. He broke it into pieces and he, and he gave it to each of us, the, each of the disciples, and said, take this and eat it for this is my body. He also took the cup and he gave thanks to God for it. God, my Father, thank you for, for this cup. For this which represents my blood which will be poured out for all people. Oh God, I pray that people would understand that it's poured out as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin. Thank you for this cup. He blessed it and he gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it. For this is my blood. My blood which confirms the, the covenant between God and his people. I tell you the truth, I will not drink from the cup again, Jesus said, until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After receiving the, the bread and the cup, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's stand. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. For my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood. precious. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing
thank and for sin atone. A thank and for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the That makes me white. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. You can take your seats. On the way to the Mount of Olives, Jesus told them, Tonight, all of you will desert me. For the scripture says that God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But when I am raised once again, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Then Peter <laughs> Oh, Peter. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter. Tonight, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted. Even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. And all the disciples vowed the same. He then went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. And he became distressed and anguished. And he said to them, my soul is crushed with grief, even to the point of death. Stay with me. Keep watch with me. Going on a little farther, he, he bowed with his face to the ground. He prayed, my father... If it is possible for this cup of suffering to be taken from me, may it be so. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. He returned to the disciples and found them asleep. And he said to Peter, couldn't you even watch for one hour? Keep watching and pray so that you may not give in to temptation for the for the the, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went a second time to pray. My father, if it is not possible for this cup of suffering to be taken from me, then let your will be done. He returned again and the disciples were asleep, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went a third time to pray, saying these same things. 
Then he returned to the disciples and said, Go ahead, sleep, have your rest. But look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Even now, the betrayer is here. Get up. Let's be going. Even as he said these things, Judas arrived with a crowd of men armed with with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests. The leading priests and the, and the elders of the people. Judas, the traitor, had given them a prearranged signal. He said, you will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then he came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi. And he gave him the kiss. Jesus responded, My friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then those with Judas grabbed Jesus and and arrested him. We didn't know what to do, we were all scared. One, One of us, took out a sword, and we, and we struck the servant of the high priest, <laughs> slashing off his ear. Jesus said, no, put away the sword. Don't you know those who, who use the sword will die by the sword? Listen, don't you understand that I could ask my father to send thousands of angels to come and protect us? And he would do so instantly. But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what happened, what happens now? Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I some sort of dangerous revolutionary that you come to arrest me with swords and clubs? Why didn't you arrest me when I was in the temple? I was there teaching every day. (laughs) Turned to his disciples and said, But this is all happening. This is all happening in order to fulfill the words of the prophets as, as, as described and recorded in the Scripture. And at that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Then the people of the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest. The teachers of the the religious law and the elders had gathered. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Peter followed at a distance until he came to the courtyard of Caiaphas. Then he went in and he sat down with the guards, waiting to see how it would all end. Inside, the leading priests and and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus. They wanted to find someone who would lie about Jesus so that they could put him to death. Even though they found many who agreed to bear false witness, they couldn't use any of their testimony. Finally, two men came forward who declared, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest said, stood up and said to Jesus, well, are you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest shouted, I demand in the name of the living God, tell us, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? And Jesus said, you have said it. 
you have said it. And in the future, you will see the Son of Man seated in a, in a place of power at the right hand of God and coming on the, the clouds of heaven. Blasphemy. We don't need any more witnesses. You've all heard this blasphemy. What is, what is the verdict? Guilty, 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 they shouted. The man deserves to die. Then they begin to spit on Jesus and, and, and beat him with their fists. Some would slap him and, and, and jeer saying, tell us, Messiah, who hit you? This time, meanwhile, Peter, meanwhile, Peter was sitting in the courtyard waiting to see how it would all end. A servant girl noticed him and went over to him and said, you are one of them. You were with Jesus, the Galilean. Peter denied it. I, I don't know what you're talking about. A little while later, a second servant girl noticed Jesus and, and in front of everyone said, said it, you were with him. Hey, he's one of them. You were with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't know him. A little while later, the bystanders gathered and they walked over to him. They said, certainly, you were one of them. You were with Jesus of Nazareth. We could tell by your Galilean accent. Peter the third time, this time with a curse. <laughs> I, I swear, I swear if I'm lying, a curse be on me. I do not know this man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly the words of Jesus flooded Peter's mind. This very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. And Jesus, or Peter, weeping bitterly, went out into the night. How deep the Father's love His dying 
how deep the Father's love. How deep the Father's love for us. His blood, it was the answer. Now this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my Jesus delivered to Pilate. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and elders of the people made their plan how to execute Jesus. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What's that to do with us, he replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, it's against God's law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial for foreigners. That is why it's been called the field of blood to this day. Then, what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on them by the people of Israel, and they used that to buy the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Do you hear the testimonies being said against you? But Jesus gave no reply, not even a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. Now, it was the governor's custom to release a prisoner at the festival that the crowd chose. At that time, there was a well-known prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. So the governor turned to the crowd and Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? <laughs> For he knew that it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in dreams because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to choose Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you, asked the governor. 
Barabbas, they answered. Then the governor said, what shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Can you believe they all answered? Crucify him. But Pilate asked, what crime has he committed? But they all shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but instead an uproar was starting, he took the water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm, I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. And all the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus to the praetorium and the whole company or group of soldiers started to mock him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and they twisted together a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and they gathered around him and mocked him. Hail the king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him. They took his staff. They struck him on the head again and again. After they mocked him, they took off the robe he was wearing and put his clothes. Then they led him away to be crucified. As they were going out, they made a man from Cyrene named Simon and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. There, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. <laughs> and I remember sitting down, they, they kept watch over him there. Uh, uh, above his head, on the cross, they placed a written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified him next to him, one on his right and one on his left. And there were people there who passed by and they, they hurled insults at him. They said things like, who are you? Weren't you the one that was going to destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are really the son of God. <laughs> and in the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the laws, they mocked him too. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. <laughs> Let him come down now from the cross if you're really the son of God. If he trusts in God, let God rescue him now if he wants to. For he said, I am the son of God. curious thing is this, in the same way, the rebels that were crucified with him mocked him, 
And I wanna say to us today, isn't that us? Every time that we don't believe and trust God and all that Jesus has done, isn't that us? Aren't we just like the rebels on the cross? And yet he died for me and he died for you. Let's continue. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out from the cross in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Sebektani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But some of those who were standing there said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran. And they got a staff and filled it with wine and vinegar. They offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah could come and save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. The curtain from the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs all broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection. Can you imagine how that must have looked. There will be a day that we will be resurrected with Jesus. We will come out of our tombs. Our bodies will be raised just like his. Can you imagine what that day is gonna be like? For the ones that are here still left over, mocked, suffering, and persecuted, God's people, you and me, oh, it's gonna be a great day. Now, when the centurion and those who were with him that were guarding Jesus saw what had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he must have been the son of God. Many women were there also, watching from a distance. They had come from Galilee to take care of his needs. Among, the, among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and Mary, the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph. He was there too. He had himself become a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and he asked for Jesus' body. And Pilate ordered that the body be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he bought that got cut out out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance and then he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there too, but they were sitting on the opposite side. The next day, the one after preparation, so the chief priests and Pharisees, they went to Pilate. They said that they remembered that while Jesus was still alive, or they said the deceiver, would rise after three days. So then Pilate gave the order for the tomb to be secured till the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body. 
and tell the people that he had been raised to life. They said that this last deception would be worse than the first. So they went and made the tomb secure. And putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. Aren't you thankful the story didn't end there? Jesus indeed laid down his life. He was dead. They made sure of it. They weren't going to make a mistake. They placed him in a borrowed tomb. It wasn't going to be used for long. And on the third day, he rose again. I want us to close by reading this scripture together, and then we're going to stand. And let's sing Death Was Arrested to close. And... Um, and be dismissed, but I want us to read this passage responsively. The first part of Matthew 28 talks about what we celebrate at Easter. But we don't have to wait till Easter to celebrate the risen Lord, do we? He's risen today. So read this with me. I'll read the first part, and then just congregationally, if you would uh, if you'd read the second line. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. (laughs) 
For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as the snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. Does that sound familiar? Jesus mentioned earlier, when I'm raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. There you will see him. See, I have told you. Then they departed quickly from the tomb fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciple. And behold, Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came up and and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and I will see, see me. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Let's stand together. Let's sing, death was arrested. Celebrate the risen Lord, the one who conquered death in the grave, the one who who paid the price for you and for me. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained my orphan heart was given the name. My morning grew quiet, my fear rose to death. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over. You have made me new now life begins with you It's your endless love pouring down on us You have made us new now life begins with you Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free Washes over me You have made me new Now life begins with you It's your endless love Pouring down on us You have made us new Now life begins with you Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross 
darkness rejoices though heaven had come. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so washings over me you have made me new now life begins with you begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life begins with Of all the redeemed, yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free forever. We're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed, yes, we're free, free. Forever, amen. That's when death was arrested, and my life began. That's when death was arrested, and my life began. That's when death was arrested, and my life began.